Good morning folks. I'm back with a another intercalation video, basically the continuation of the last video. And uh, what I have here is uh, 50 milliliters of uh, distilled water with 50 milliliters of phosphoric acid and uh, about 20 grams of powdered graphite uh, in there and I'm just right now I'm starting the intercalation process. Uh, I'm not, I haven't added any heat to it yet. I'm just uh, uh, mixing it all well. Uh, basically, I'm going to let this stir for an hour or so, and then I'm going to crank up the heat onto it, into it, and get it uh, will evaporate all the water off. And when it can't stir it anymore, I'll take it outside and uh, and dry the rest of it out in the sun. I'll be back later. I'm back, and uh, <coughs> I've stirred the. Uh, uh, graphite and phosphoric acid uh, mixed on low heat for about an hour and now I've cranked up the heat to above uh, the boiling point of water and you can see I'm uh, evaporating off the, the water and I'll be back. Alright I'm back and it's gotten so thick now that the uh, magnetic stirrer won't, won't turn anymore so I turned it off and uh, still got the heat on it and it looks like, uh, when you look at it up close, it looks like um, molten graphite. So, uh, anyway, I'm just going to keep on cooking it there until it dries out. I'll be back. Alright, I'm back. And uh, I took the, the uh, graphite that I spread on this to test the uh, conductivity of it. And, uh, and I smeared it around and I'm going to let that dry uh, that way. And that should dry faster. And then uh, I'll try buffing that and see what I can get that down to. And uh, then I took another drop and I put it on some graph oil here, and uh, I'll let it dry that way too. And then, uh, then we can uh, have it already on there applied, and I can test it. So, uh, and so this may be actually a faster way to do it. Just cook it down till you get the syrup, which doesn't take that long, and then uh, then run it out this way, and then let it dry on in your, on your application. All right, I'll be back. And here's what our phosphoric acid uh, intercalated uh, graphite looks like after three hours of uh, cooking it. It does dry out eventually. Uh, it needs high temperatures though because the uh, the middle part, uh, the hot plate was the hottest and that formed a, uh, a hard solid. But around the edges it's still, uh, it's still a liquidy. So it just needs to be uh, cooked on a, a bigger um, hot plate until it completely gets hard if you want it completely hard. Now what I'm thinking is that while I've got some liquid still in there uh, how how far do we have to dehydrate this to before it, uh, it works? I mean that's a, uh, a real nice paintable uh, uh, liquid in there right now. That I, I took a hair dryer to this and, and tried to dry it down and it got it down drier so maybe that's a, a way to do it. So I'm going to try to build a cell and we'll see what uh, happens. Uh, I've already got the, uh, the anode mixed here and I used the titanium dioxide, uh, the clear glue and the alcohol and uh, on here but instead of, uh, of dipping it in a, a mixture of borax and trisodium phosphate I just dipped it into the just into straight borax. Uh, one of the things that I noticed um, if you dip it into just straight borax, you get a soft gel thin film. If you dip it into the trisodium phosphate by itself, you get a soft thin uh, a gel film. If you, if you mix the trisodium phosphate together and the borax and then dip it into it, you get a hard film. And you don't really, really notice it because it's so thin until you go to clean the electrode up. And when I cleaned that first one that I made that way up, so hard I had to sand it off. Uh, so, but it still, but it worked fine. So maybe uh, find a better application. Anyway, I just thought I'd mention that. I got to do a couple more things, and I'll be back, and uh, we'll build another battery. And I just ran a, a little microwave experiment. I took a drop of the uh, graphite uh, intercalated material, and I uh, spread it on a piece of paper, and I threw it in the microwave for a couple of minutes on on five, and uh, it lit up like this. Fourth of July sparks in there, and uh, of course burnt the piece of paper up. But uh, I, I, I salvaged some of the material, and, and which was still somewhat damp, and uh, and I put it in the uh, in a glass uh, 
uh, jar here and, uh, and did it again and it's still lighting up like crazy and it got hot and blew the bottom of the uh, side of the bottom of the jar out and I so I lost the mat a lot of the material but it, it definitely will exfoliate in a, in a uh, microwave so uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with the uh, dryer material all right I'll be back I'm back with an overview here of what I'm about to do and uh, at the end of the last video I made a battery where I moved the uh, titanium dioxide off of the separator uh, paper and onto the zinc uh, plate and uh, and this time what we're going to do is add a uh, the TSP to to the uh, separator paper so it'll have now it'll have electrolyte on it and water and graphite and then uh, we're going to test that and compare that to the results that we got from uh, the test with just graphite water and uh, titanium dioxide here and then we're going to add uh, for the third part we're going to add our interclated uh, graphite uh, into the mix uh, with the graphite and the titanium or in the TSP and water titanium dioxide and we'll see what we get right there with the uh, full electrolytes I'll be ready to set up here in a minute and I'll be back okay I'm ready and uh, our final test is going to be with these two here because this one's got the intercalated uh, graphite on it and uh, so we're going to make this one first but only use half of it and then we'll adjust that on our uh, calculations at the end all right so what we need to do is paint some graphite on the electrode here just on half of it Here's a piece of uh, paper towel that I've soaked in uh, trisodium phosphate and uh, water. And we're going to uh, put, actually, we're going to put that on our electrode here first. That way, I can paint another coat of graphite on the spot okay and that hook it up there we go we have a hundred and one or one point one seven three and climbing on our voltage five maybe we climb up Probably go to 118 or 119, something like that. And we had 1.23 volts on the first test. Alright. So it slowed down right there. I'll press on it a little bit and see what we get. Actually, made it go down. <laughs> Alright, so his high was uh, 117.7. And our uh, milliamps are three, two, one, one point four. All right, that's pretty poor. You can see it's back to one ten already. So the recharge is not a problem. It's just it's no current, probably because we only have half of our electrolytes in there. But just for the hell of it, let's short it again here and see that we got a short in our. But I don't think so. Already, ready? Three, two, one. One point eight that time. A little bit better. All right. So uh, now we'll switch it out and uh, test test it again with the uh, this electrode. All right. And now we on this one we have similar voltage. One. 0.169 and this one's slowly dropping a little bit. Alright. Let's see what kind of amps we got. 3, 2, 1, 4.2. Wow. That didn't work much better than the uh, than the other one. Maybe. 
<laughs> I just realized what the problem was. Look where I have the uh, the setting. I'm on the 10 amp setting. <laughs> I've got the electrodes connected for 10 amps, and so that's like uh, it might be 400 instead of four. Or <laughs> I don't know. We're gonna reset the thing here and uh, and see what we got. All right. Now let's see what kind of milliamps we got. Three, two, one. Oh yeah, it just went over. I saw it flash over, so it's over 200. Yeah, so that's a pretty good starting, I'd say. Now so now let's switch it back to the 10 amp reading, charging. But I'm gonna let it give it a little bit of extra time, and uh, then we'll try this again. All right, I'm back, and it's really slow. It, but it's uh, right at uh, 108.5 and I think that's about as high as it's going to get without a long wait alright so I'm going to hit it again here there's the amps over here we're on the 10 amp scale now so it'll be 0 0.2 something or 0 0.3 something or 0 0.3 I don't know whatever alright here we go 3, 2, 1 ooh 4.3 or 0.43 which is what we got on our initial hit on the thing uh, with the wrong <laughs> setting you know and on this one we got 1.9 uh, with just trisodium phosphate on there half of the equation and uh, here so this produced 190 and here we got 4.3 or 400 and, uh, 430 uh, milliamps from um, or 0.43 milli or amps from this and it's half the size of this initial one over here that we got the 153 uh, milliamps from you see it was the 2 by 3 which is about twice the size of these and so we got uh, about the same voltage but from half the size we got over uh, 4 from 3 this is almost three times the amount right here with uh, so it looks to me like this uh, the intercalated stuff is working. I'll have to cycle it a few times and uh, and see how it holds up here. But uh, I'll do that, and uh, if, uh, and then if I have time, I'll include it in uh, in this video. All right, I'm back with a wrap up here, and uh, I cycled the the cell here a total of uh, 13 times, and uh, its peak uh, amperage was uh, 450 milliamps there near the beginning and it, it slowly uh, dropped off to uh, 310 uh, milliamps uh, after at the 13th uh, cycle on it. Uh, it it dropped its voltage uh, the whole way too and uh, you know it, that could be uh, somewhat uh, from water loss and the, or it could be maybe where um, uh, the membranes are breaking down from uh, the higher current load or something I don't know I added water to it a couple of times and uh, on this one here there was a definite uh, in, uh, response uh, to higher voltage again and I added some more graphite down here and that made it, uh, that bumped up the uh, amperage uh, and volts a little bit too. Now I'm going to uh, show you something else here before I close real quick. Some uh, new research that I found that's uh, really cool. I'll be back. And this is a paper from Rice University about their new dual surface uh, graphene electrode that splits water into hydrogen and oxygen and uh, it's amazingly similar to what I'm doing here and uh, notice that they're using uh, phosphorus uh, in the uh, electrode uh, I'll let you pause the video and uh, read the, the next page uh, for yourself because I'm short on time I appreciate you guys watching and thanks for all the comments. I'll see you next time.